Welcome to another episode of What Does That Do? A series of videos where I examine malicious coding techniques and explain what the code is doing and how it can be abused. In today's episode, I'll be talking about one of the more interesting techniques that I've encountered, white space encoding. I first came across this at work in late 2013 and didn't really think anything of it, aside from mentioning it to coworkers and then going about removing it from the customer's website until I read about it again earlier this year. Additionally, when people find out that I research malware for a living, they often ask, what's the strangest thing you've seen? And this is it. Initially, I came across this exact function, the core libraries handler, and was confused by the large chunk of white space that's present. Normal operations when looking at web malware is to normalize it, stripping out excess white space, converting it to all lowercase, to make it less likely to evade detection just by changing spaces to tabs, adding blank lines, or changing the case of function calls. And it makes this kind of malware completely disappear. So how does it work? The first thing we need to do is to examine the processing part. Here, the code takes the session keys variable and splits it into groups of eight characters and iterates over them. Tabs, or the ASCII character 9, are converted to the number 1, while spaces, the ASCII character 32, are converted to the number 0. This gives us an 8-character string of 1s and zeros, a bit string. We then convert that bit string to a decimal number, and then into a character, before we replace the current index in our original string with the new character. And once we've cycled through all of these, we check to make sure that it's still defined and then echo it out. The register shutdown function here is simply a way to force the execution of this function when the PHP script completes its execution. This example here has the normal location of the payload replaced with just a placeholder that makes it easier to see what the code is doing. For a full example, we can take a look at this example here, where we have the function definition and the session keys set to a large, a, an extremely large chunk of white space before we have the rest of it. In this example also, I've modified it to create a brand new string and only echo out that new string. In the previous example, the original session keys was only partially replaced with the new characters, resulting in a large block of white space being echoed out at the end. As I know what the payload is, I feel safe in executing this PHP script. And what we end up with is an HTML page that explains how this white space encoding actually works. So, what can we do about this kind of encoded malware? Well, for one, large chunks of white space, as seen in here, should definitely be seen as suspect, especially when it's a mix of spaces and tabs. For another, Files like this appear significantly larger than their content should otherwise implies, and they should be closely inspected if there's a large file with very few ASCII characters in it. Encoding malware like this inflates the content by a factor of 8, so any lengthy piece of code will be positively enormous. The base code for the core libraries handler, for example, is only 713 characters, including all of the extra white space that formats the code so it's readable. Every encoding character in the payload adds another eight characters to the file, so you end up doubling the size with fewer than 100 characters of malware. In the specific case of the core libraries handler, the other noteworthy piece is the comment blocks. The comment blocks are actually reversed, so they only comment out the ends and the beginnings of lines. They don't actually comment out the code itself. However, a quick glance at the code 
may make someone think that the code is actually commented out and non-functional when it's not, simply because you have the beginning of a comment block at the top and a long closing to the comment block at the bottom. However, the comments are actually closed off at the beginning of the lines and reopened again at the end of each line, which leaves the code itself available for PHP to execute. So, you might be asking yourself, if this is so old, why is this worth a video now? Well, the core libraries handler is just one example of this technique being used, and, as it turns out, it was already around for a couple of years before I came across it. But at the end of last year, similar functionality was found by Securi to have been used again to deliver JavaScript malware in a similar fashion. Links are in the description below if you're interested in reading about those. But again, this was also a large block of white space. And that got me thinking, why? Why is it always a large chunk? Does it have to be a large chunk? And the answer frightened me. No, it doesn't have to be a chunk at all. It doesn't have to be large either. As malware researchers or analysts, we're familiar with malware of all shapes and sizes, and some of the small pieces still allow for some large secondary effects. And we're also very familiar with developers that have odd encodings or styles that make their code blocks look absolutely ridiculous. And that, that is where malware can be hidden in the white space. PHP's flexibility, whether it's unquoted strings being used in string operations, or virtually non-existent standards around coding styles and white space usage, make it ideal to hide malware within legitimate code simply by manipulating the spaces. And from the malware author's perspective, the decoding and execution of malware can be disguised as any sort of pseudo-legitimate functionality, whether it's a license check or a validation routine. By way of example, I've embedded an eval request in this WordPress config file at the expense of a two-character increase in the file size and no change in the functionality. Just a strange editor quirk that messed around with the spacings in the file. Here's the original, and here is the infected. Nothing to see there, just strange white space. To show you what's actually encoded there, I have a script, and we can run that against the new one, and lo and behold, there we have an eval of a base64 encoded post variable. So, how does that work? Well, all it does is run this validate function, which I've defined in a functions.php file, completely normal appearing. If we look at the functions file, we see that the validation here simply does some meaningless operations here, getting MD5s of the content. It replaces the non white space or the carriage return or line feed characters with the empty string. And then if it detects the ASCII character 11, which is the vertical tab, within the remaining white space, then it splits the content on, the, on that character and takes the first argument. Then it proceeds to replace space characters with 0 and tab characters with 1, and then again performs some meaningless checksumming to further disguise what going on. It builds a pseudo-legitimate license string out of the conversion of that binary representation of decimal numbers turned into characters, and then returns it. So again, in this case, all it does is echo it. But that could easily be an eval, or a file get contents, or pretty much anything that you want. And hiding it as a validation, you could very easily have for instance, a malicious plugin that checks to make sure that the checksum of the white space matches something, so that way it detects whether or not somebody has stripped the tabs out and replaced them with 
regular spaces before deciding whether to continue on execution. And again, if we look at the, the new file, all it really appears to be is some odd choices in where to put tabs and where to put spaces. And if WordPress were to read this, it would work perfectly fine. So what can we do about this? Well, as I mentioned earlier, if you see large chunks of white space, be suspicious. If you see odd white space usage, be suspicious. Look around. It's not always going to be just one file. You could have, as with this WP config example, a configuration file that contains the malware, and another file that reads it in and runs it. Hopefully this has given you some food for thought. That's all for this episode. If you're a website owner or a malware researcher, what's the strangest or most interesting thing you've come across? Or if you have a sample that you want me to take a look at, leave a comment below and let me know. If you liked this and want to see more, hit the like button. If you want to be notified when I post new videos, hit subscribe, and have a nice day. Thanks for watching.